All right, so I uploaded this document in both the section 6.5 and 6.6 .6 folder yesterday evening, uh, just in case uh, you know you were maybe looking around for uh, any new notes. Okay, um, but hopefully you were able to uh, locate this file. Um, if not, no big deal. These are relatively short problems. All right, so if you got a piece of scrap paper, you know that. It, won't be all that difficult to uh, jot them down on your own here. But we're going to uh, recap some of those properties that were um, featured in the video lessons for 6.5. Um, we're we're going to first look at quick ways of evaluating log functions. And uh, they're, they're basically shortcuts. And, and what, what gives these, um, you know, what, what makes these shortcuts it's how the numbers are arranged and how they kind of correspond to each other. So I'm going to do these uh, in a couple of ways. Um, we'll just kind of reason them out. And then what I'll do is uh, give you some properties that allow us to just kind of whiz by through the rest of them. So let's take a look at number one. I first want to point out that this is log base seven of the number one. And let's pretend that we don't know what this is equal to. Um, so one thing that we could try is to maybe set this equal to a variable, perhaps y. And then we could log loop it, starting at 7, wrapping around y, and ending at 1 to get 7 to the y is equal to 1. My question for you is this what power would have to be on 7 in order for it to equal 1? So, 0, exactly. <clears throat> yeah, the only way that we would turn 7 to the number 1 is if the variable y was equal to 0. So for that reason, our answer to number 1 is the number 0. And basically, when you're looking at a log expression, you just want to ask yourself this kind of question, all right? Log base 7 of 1 is really a, a question about, okay, what power of 7 gives me 1? Okay, so, <clears throat> so think about that with problem 2. This is log base 10 of 10. Okay, it's a common log being applied to the number 10. And let's ask ourselves this question. What power of 10 gives me 10? If you're not sure, let's set it equal to y. We'll log loop. And then we'll look at this log statement in exponential format. 10 to what is equal to 10? And Kevin, you're right on the money with that. y would have to equal the number 1. So log base 10 of 10 is equal to the number 1. So I'm going to jot down a couple of properties that we can kind of glean from this uh, right off the bat. I'll do them up here. And these are evaluation properties. There are some other properties known as like the product rule, quotient rule, and power rule. But when it comes to evaluating, any time that we take the log of the number 1, it's automatically going to equal the number 0. And that's because of the definition of a log. You're asking yourself what power of A gives me 1, and the only power that we could put on this base to get 1 would have to be 0. Another property is when the base of the log matches the argument. So log base A of A, you ask yourself, okay, well, what power of A gives me A? And the only power that can make that work is the number one. And then the last property is this. Let's say we have log base A, and in the argument, we have the exponential expression A to the power of X. When the base of the log matches the base of the exponential, we, we get what, 
kind of appears to be canceling, what this expression is equal to is x. And the reason for it is because of a log loop. If we were to rewrite this in exponential format, we'd have to take a, raise it to the power of x, and set it equal to the inside. And if I write that out, that's a to the x is equal to a to the x, which is definitely true, right? So in a sense, when you take log base a of a to the x, you can kind of imagine this as canceling, namely the log notation and the base a cancels, and you're left over with the power. Okay, so matching bases, the power comes down, and you get rid of the other notation. All right, so keep these in mind. They actually uh, really speed up uh, some log calculations. Let's look at number three, okay? Number three involves the natural log. The natural log of E is what we're trying to find. And I'm gonna rewrite this as log base E of E. So based on one of the properties up there, what would this have to equal? It would equal zero if the argument was one. So here we have log base E of E. That kind of resembles property two, doesn't it? It's a special case where the base A is the base E and so is the argument. Yep. So this would have to equal one. All right, so that'd be option C. So far, so good, everybody? Now for number four, this is log base four of 64. If you can write the argument using the base of the log, then we can actually apply property three. Case in point, we can rewrite 64 as four cubed. And here we have matching bases. The base of the log matches the base of the exponential expression. And when that happens, you can cancel out the log with the base and your final answer is gonna be whatever the exponent is. Okay, and so this would be option D. So let me have you try that with problem five. Let me just rewrite it so it looks a little more normal. This is log base six of one over 36. See if you can rewrite this fraction as a power of six. All right, once you think you have it, feel free to pop it in the chat. All right, what do you guys think about negative two? All right, well, let me take a couple of intermediate steps here. 36 is the same as six squared. Now you can bring six squared up to the top if you wanted, but when you do so, you have to change the power to its opposite sign. So this would be log base six, of six to the power of negative two. And by rewriting it this way, we get the base of the log matching the base of the exponential. Canceling takes place, and our final answer is gonna be this power of negative two. So you got it, option B. What do you guys think about number six? This is log base nine of nine to the power of 13. 
You got it, 13. Yep, base of the log matches the base of the exponential. Cancel those out. Our final answer is going to be this power, 13, option A. What option do you think it's going to be for number 7? I'll give you a clue. You could write this as log base e of e to the power of radical 3. Okay, base of the log matches the base of the exponential. Get some canceling. Our final answer is going to be this power of radical 3. So you got an option C. Now let me give you one more property for this skill. We call it property 4. If you switch the role of the log and the exponential, you kind of get a similar result. So let's say that we have the base of the exponential being raised to log base a of x. Because the exponential function and logs are inverses of each other, when we put one function into the other, canceling happens. In this case, you know, we're putting the log inside the argument of the exponential expression. In other words, when we put a log inside the exponent, and the bases match, canceling occurs again, and what's left over is the argument. So a to the log base a of x is equal to x. So with number 8, this can be rewritten as e to the log base e of 2. What would our final answer be? The option C, yep. So the base of the exponential matches the base of the log. These cancel, and what's left over is 2. Okay, so that'd be option C. Any questions so far? Okay, well, let me give you some more properties. Actually, I'll, I'll call these rules. Uh, the first rule is the product rule. The product rule says this. If we have a log with any base, and there's multiplication going on inside of the log's argument, this will split up into two logs with the same base A that will be added to each other. Now every log has an argument and um, I left them blank for now because there's a specific order that you want to go in when you write this out from left to right. So first of all, multiplication turns into addition when it comes to logs. All right, if there's multiplication in the argument, then it'll split this up into two log base A's that are being added together. The argument of the first log is this first factor, M. Okay, and the argument of the second log is the second factor, N. Now this is a two-way street, okay? In some problems, you might start out with uh, the left-hand side, in which case you can convert it to the right-hand side. In other problems, though, you might have multiple logs that can be condensed into a single log. So this is a two-way street, okay? Um, when it comes to equations, most of the time you'll have the right-hand side presented to you at first, in which case you have to condense. All right, so we'll see that in section six. There's also what's called the quotient rule. And this handles the case of division inside of the log. So let's say it's log base A of M over N. Okay, so this time we have division. 
this will split up into two log base A's. But if multiplication led to addition, what do you think division is going to lead to? Subtraction. Okay. So in the first rule, the product rule, we start out with multiplication, end up with addition. In the quotient rule, we start off with division, and we're going to end up with subtraction. The numerator will always go on the first log, and the denominator will always go on the second log. And again, this is one of those two-way street properties where, depending on what expression you start out with, you might have to collapse it into a single log or break it up into multiple logs. All right, but to review, division leads to the subtraction of two logs using the same base. The last rule is the power rule. And this handles the situation where it's log base A of let's say m to the power of n. In this case, we can't cancel out because the base of the log is different than the base of the exponential. But even though we can't cancel out, we still get some good stuff that happens. Anytime you apply a log to something that has a power, such as n, we can actually bring this power n down in the front. And what we do with it is we multiply it to log base a of m. So we basically strip the power away from m and we turn it into a factor. Okay, so anytime that we have something raised to a power inside the argument, we can bring that down in front and change it to multiplication. All right, and that's the power rule. And this is another one of those two-way streets. Okay, in some cases we might start with the power. In other cases, we might start with something in front of the log. So with that, let's look at problem nine. This is log base C of Q plus log base C of R. So we're starting out with multiple logs. And if you notice our answer choices, three of them have a single log involved. And why that makes sense is because um, if, if you look at either the power or the quotient rule, they're two-way streets, right? Um, so this is a situation where we're starting with the right-hand side, and we might want to go to the left-hand side um, in order to collapse the two logs into a single log. So let's look at the product rule here. We're kind of starting out with the right-hand side. So that means the only route we can take is going from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. And the left-hand side tells us to write this as a single log, which we will. Log, let's keep the same base C. And inside the argument, we have to multiply the two arguments involved in the logs. In case in point, the first argument is Q, the second argument is R. So going inside this single log base C is going to be Q times R. Okay, so this is a situation where we're kind of working backwards where the addition ended up turning into multiplication. So what option are we looking at? Yeah, B. It kind of looks like D is a possibility, um, but notice that they put parentheses around QR in option B. So this is the more proper answer. Option B. Well, let's look at number 10. <clears throat> Q 
here we have addition, okay, and we have multiple log base sixes. So we are going to multiply arguments together, but what makes this a little bit different than problem nine is that we have numbers in front of each log. So anytime you have numbers in front of each log and you're looking to collapse it into just one copy of a log, you have to restore these factors as powers. In other words, we're going to bring them back up as powers of the argument. And here's what I mean. The first log we're going to rewrite as log base 6 of x to the power of 3. So this is kind of like the power rule in reverse. Plus log base 6 of x minus 6 to the power of 5. So there can't be anything in front of the logs before you condense them. If there is anything in front of the logs, we have to bring them up as powers. Okay, so now that everything in front of the logs is gone, let's remind ourselves that the only way this is going to turn into addition is if it started out as multiplication. Hey Larry, I got a quick question for you. Yeah, go ahead. Um, when you're moving to 5 from 5 log to base 6, would it be inside the parentheses or outside the parentheses? Outside. Okay, because the other one, the 3, was inside the parentheses. Yeah, so there's there's kind of like a duplicate set of parentheses here that's implied. Okay. All right. Can write it like that. Mm -hmm. Now, um, when I condense this into a single log, base 6, I recommend maybe using brackets for this because one of our factors already has parentheses. And what we're going to multiply together is this x cubed with x minus 6 to the power of 5. So x cubed, remember addition turns into multiplication and vice versa, x minus 6 to the power of 5. Now the answer choices don't use brackets, but I, I think there's one answer choice here that's an obvious match to ours. What answer choice would that be? Yep, option C. Can I have you guys try number 11? All right, so there's a number in front of this first log. I'm going to bring it back up as a power. So log base b of q to the fifth minus log base b of r. Now notice between the two logs, we have subtraction. And although it's kind of a subtle detail, it is important that these two log bases match each other. You can only condense when the bases match. And if you kind of keep track of everything that we've been doing, that has been the case. But with for some off chance that the bases don't match, you just kind of have to leave it alone. In this case, our bases do match. And the only way that subtraction is going to occur is if division is taking place inside of that single log. So let's condense this into a single log base B. And inside the argument, we're going to have a fraction bar. All right, and that's because we had subtraction to start out with. The argument of the first log, q to the fifth, is going to be the numerator. And the argument of the second log, which is r, 
pirate's favorite letter, by the way, is going to go into the denominator. So it looks like our answer is going to be option B. All right, so with that, can I have you try number 12? All right, what are you guys thinking for number 12? <clears throat> Option D, I agree. So check it out. We do have numbers in front of each log. We'll bring them back up as powers. I'll include an extra set of parentheses in this first log. It's x minus 9, quantity to the power of 6 minus an actual log of x to the fifth. Okay, each log has the same base. It's a base e. And between the two logs is subtraction. So we can, uh, we can collapse this into a single natural log. And I'm going to use brackets for it. And because it's subtraction, we have to have division inside of this logarithm. And in the numerator, We'll go to the first argument, x minus 9 to the power of 6. And in the denominator, we'll go our second argument, which is x to the fifth. So right on the money with option D. All right, any questions so far? Then I kindly ask that you get your graphing calculators ready. We're going to need them for problems 13 and 14. So there are some graphing calculators that would allow you to type a log base 3 or even something crazy like a log base 5.9. But in the majority of cases, um, you, you know, students generally don't have that capability, um, especially if they have like a TI-83. All right, so what I'm going to show you will handle all cases, whether you're able to type a log in this way or not. Um, we are going to want to be able to type something like this into our graphing calculator, you know, if, if we try to solve an equation graphically. And if you're unable to type it the way that we see it here, um, what you're forced to use is something called the change of base formula, which I'm going to provide to you below. Now the change of base formula allows you to change the base of your logarithm, hence the name. Let's say that we have log base b of a. There are two ways that we're allowed to rewrite this. Well, actually, there, there's a lot of ways, but, but the uh, two most popular ways to rewrite this expression is to use a common log. And then the other way would be to use a natural log. Now the rewrite of this expression with a common log is as follows. Log base A on top of log of B. Okay, so the original argument A is the argument of the top log, and the original base B is the argument of the bottom log. And so this is a common log version of the change of base formula. The natural log version mimics it. 
in that there are two logs on one on top one on bottom and on top we're going to have the natural log of the original argument a divided by the natural log of the original argument b or the original base i should say Okay, so then always in the top log is your original argument. I'll say OG arg. And then always in the bottom log is going to be your original base. So OG base. Okay. So when it comes to number 13, We could choose either of these two formulas. I'll use the common log version, and then um, we'll, we'll type this in together, and I'll show you that we get the exact same thing with the natural log version. But the most important thing is to uh, be able to rewrite this, you know, in, in the proper form of the change of base formula. If we use the common log version, we're going to have log on top of log. And in the top log, we'll go with the original argument of 0.471. And then in the bottom log, we'll go with the original base of 3. All right, so let's go to our calculators. Let's type log. 0.471 and be sure to close off this argument with the parentheses otherwise your calculator will think that the log of 3 is inside this first logs argument we'll divide by log of 3 and to three decimal places we're looking at negative 0.685 now I'm going to do this with the natural log version. Natural log is 0 0.471. Close off the argument divided by the natural log of 3. Get the same answer. And can I get a mind blow emoji in that chat? Isn't that pretty cool? So which version should you use? Well, that's up to you. All right, whatever you're more comfortable with, I'm good with. All right, but either way, we should be getting option D for problem 13. All right, let me have you go ahead and try problem 14. And we'll be finished with the recap. We'll move on to section six. Any offers as to what number 14 is? All right, I'm getting C as well. So yeah, you could rewrite this as log 29 divided by log of 5.9. Okay, so again, in the top log, we'll go the original argument. Bottom log, we'll go the original base. And yeah, that should give us option C.